All right. So this is going to be kind of just some talk and some general reference in on the X80 GT. So I have a few flashlights here, and I'd like to kind of do an independent review of the X80 GT. Um, but this is just going to be an opening, some opening conversation about it. I think it's a wonderful marvel that it exists. I'm very proud to own it. Um, not proud. I'm happy to own it. This is a hobby for me, and I really enjoy flashlights for a long time. I haven't owned the brightest in the world for for a while now. I've owned the this little guy, and actually an, another D4. So I have two MSR D4s. This is the TI. Um, I don't know if it'll get in there, but um, this is an MSR4 TI, which is very nice. Um, 4,000 lumens, which is just absolutely, if I focus in on just where, what it's doing there, you can't see anything else. You know, if it goes at the camera, it could actually hurt it, so. And it's already burning up in my hand, and that's important to recognize. It's just how quick these things... This also has a very nice, very nice low mode that the camera can focus into and it won't really hurt the camera. You can still see my hand and everything. So, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice light. We have some problems with some critters in our home right now. Anyways, um, so it's Big Brother, okay? is this pop can right here. And this pop can's big brother is that 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 this is gonna take a long time with my left hand. Alright. Uh, yeah. Is this guy. So this is the X80 GT and I just took the batteries out to charge them, which is notable. Um so we'll talk about batteries more in a sec, but this is very, very nice. You can see how it can be can probably be mounted right to a camera or have a camera mounted to it. I'm not sure what else you would use for this. I would never use this as a gun light. Um, I guess you maybe maybe you could, but uh, it's so heavy that the shock could cause problems. Also, it doesn't have double springs on its contact points, so enough shock is going to break the circuit connection, and that could flicker the light so I would never use this to I would never depend my life on this flashlight but so um so anyways but yeah that's that's him so I'm going to talk about some things that no one seems to have talked about so you all know the outputs I'm not even going to mention the max output on this x80 GT but this is the you know that uh, brief interruption there. So I'd like to talk about things with the GT that um that people haven't mentioned. Let me turn this guy off. Um, this is my EDC. I EDC this guy. Um, the MSRD 4Ti. And I'm actually EDCing the X80 GT for now, too. Um, but let me tell you what. So, let's move this other guys out of the way. Um, so, what's crazy about it, all right? First off, some positive and negative important details that you can't tell from watching the video. One thing is the feel of it, very nice and smooth. Um, the knurling is grippy though. You can easily grip this with two fingers when the batteries are in there. Right now it's tipping forward because there's no batteries. But normally you can grip it right here and you're just fine. And there's plenty of grip. You're not going to drop it. Um, it will... This isn't the flattest surface, and again, there's no batteries, so it wants to kind of tip forward. But it will actually um, sit on the on this, which I think is kind of cool because it helps it lift up off the ground. And again, it wants to tip because of the batteries. But um, it keeps it up off the ground and lets you kind of angle the light, which I think is kind of fun. Okay, not to mention that if you hang it on something with the batteries and you can tell because even without them it's coming close if if you have something thin enough that it goes all the way up the handle to here um, you can hang it on stuff like on a coat rack I don't know why you would do that um, but it's possible and of course you can bolt things to here if you want to and I'm not sure exactly what sizing that's for 
and what that's useful for. But um, when it tail stands, it does not touch the handle unless you're on like carpet. And then the handle will touch the ground, but it doesn't really, it's slightly elevated for my model at least. So maybe that's a mistake and an imperfection. I don't know. But I think um, in general, it's not quite going to touch. Uh, it's actually a good thing because if it did touch, it would kind of destabilize the light. And you'd wind up with just two points of contact instead of uh, a perfectly circular point of contact. Which really, this tail span's better than the, better than this guy. Okay. Um, better than the old TK75 tail stands. In fact, this guy, when I'm putting it, resting it, I feel more confident with it like that. Um, but you can just see that this can fit inside of the handle to the TK75. I don't know if you can tell. But I mean, it is tiny. The dimension is on this, and I have a pop can here. Um, just so that you know the exact dimensions ex precisely, I have I've measured it with a pop can sitting on top of this. And within a millimeter, the bezel, the very widest, thickest part on this thing, if you don't include the little button, actually, when the when the handle's not up here, this is not elevated very far above that. But anyways, so the bezel, okay, is about the same thickness within, when I say about, I mean within a millimeter, the same exact thickness as the thickest part of the can, which is the, the body of the can. So keep that in mind. That's really amazing, which means everything else that's on this is significantly thinner than the pop can. It is also notable, very much so, that a pop can is taller. Okay, I don't know if you can, if you can tell, but the pop can is taller by um, about two or three millimeters. It's taller than the X80 GT, or at least my pop can here. Maybe pop cans vary, I don't know. Uh, but this is Pepsi, which is what they had on their interweb site, and they showed you pictures of it like this, and I thought they were kidding. I thought that, that the picture was a little doctored, but it was not. And these are, if you look at it, like here, look at how fat this is. It's just so much fatter than the XAGTD. Um, in the hand, this has an awesome feel except for when it's on max blast. <sighs> At which case, interestingly enough, most of the heat seems to be on the head of the flashlight and this gets really, really hot, whereas this is still touchable. It's also notable that the button, despite being metal, is much easier to touch than you'd think while it's on. Now the button has kind of two clicks. It kind of goes in and then it clicks in. So I'm not sure what water resistance is in there, but I believe that movement of this can pump water into the flashlight. That's why you don't want to turn it on or off under water. Um, that being said, you know, it is just a very nice switch. It feels very nice on the hand. It feels a little bit aluminum ish without the same time kind of a steel metallic feeling it reminds me and i know this is weird but it reminds me of captain america's shield i don't know it's just just it's one of those buttons this is my uh it should be noted that this is my first flashlight with a metal side switch i've never had a pop can light before and i've never had one that has a metal side switch um <clears throat> so it's very fun the side switch is still touchable when this is untouchable, and these fins get ridiculously hot. It's almost like they're made out of a special material that's designed to get hot, which is exactly what they did. Um, the air vent helps, and I think that there's a small issue with fog happening on the inside of the lens, which is solved by the by the air vent. I don't know, but when I first turned it on, there's a tiny dot. That was perfectly in the center, in, in the center of the, of this, um, and it went away after just a few seconds of turning the output down. But I don't know, I don't know, I don't really know what this is for. But it's not just for heat. Um, the convection that happens from these, because uh, events don't just increase area; they they help convection currents start to build up, so that you have. Some air comes in here and it starts to circulate on its own just by, you know, the air that's that's in the vents gets hot, it goes up, 
it gets cool, it comes back down, it goes up and cool and creates convection currents in the air around it. And that, this thing does an excellent job at thermal management for its size. Okay, um, I'm not going to turn it on yet in this video, believe it or not, because I want to let my batteries fully charge again. <sighs> so, um, this is a very nice LED indication for power. I have not yet drained it down to red, ever. So that's notable that if you're normal and you're not weird and you're not purposely doing it, you're not going to drain the batteries on this thing. It's just... I'm not going to say it's efficient, but it's it's so powerful that you don't need all that extra power. And you wind up, oftentimes, I wind up using this in the 1000 and 200 lumen modes. Um, it is... Uh, so, uh, other things, you know, just the feel, the description of the feel a little bit more. It's a very, very solid feeling. And the, this knurling is very, um, let me see if I can nail this. But the, uh, the knurling, a little bit further. There we go. So, the knurling is very, very rugged, but yet big enough that it doesn't hurt the hand. Okay, not to mention the handle. Now, the, the the interesting thing I didn't think about when I bought this, although I knew it, is that there's no way to put a lanyard on other than right on through this, okay, and other than through the handle. You can't have a lanyard on it, which is an interesting point to a light that you very much so want to have a handle on. Um, that being said, even without the handle, this is, I mean, a... A lanyard. Okay, this is very nice in the hand. It's very, very nice in the hand. The button, the button switch is uh, very nice. Again, it's it's kind of like it goes in, and then you can let's see if you can hear this. Anyways, so it goes in and then it presses. So. Um, it's it's actually it's uh, um it's a little bit unnerving at first because you 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 push it in okay you can't tell that I'm pushing can you but you push it in and nothing happens but then you click and it turns on or actually uh, yeah you click to turn it on you hold it down for a whole second and it comes on on two two hundred lumens. At which point you have to take your hand off to then change modes. Um, and once you change mode into the 1000 lumens, it will never go back to 200 lumens again, which kind of sucks. I also wish that the 200 was lower, but it's actually... And the 200 lumens is low enough. So, um, that you can, you can almost look straight at it. But otherwise, uh, when you're using it, um, even if you're very close range, like right up in here... The 200 lumens is not so powerful that it hurts your eyes. Even if you have nighttime adopted vision to a degree, as long as you got a good couple feet, the intensity is so low that doesn't hurt you that much. So it's um, and it's dispersed over all these LEDs, and I think that gives you 11 lumens per LED, which is relatively. Yeah, on a hot summer day when the sun is out, if you go outside with this and you adapt your eyes to that sun, or you have sunglasses on, that's the other thing, um, you can look directly into it without a problem, okay, at 200 lumens. Make sure that you don't accidentally click it and it comes in at 1,000 lumens. You have to make sure that's 200, okay, <sighs> which I have made the mistake of mm, several times okay because it's so floody it's kind of hard to tell that it's a thousand lumens um but it, it makes sense so um so as for batteries it should be noted that i have a couple adc flashlights here that i'll use an example but it should be noted that the um battery case does not have double-sided springs and that is just a little bit of a problem, which I will explain here in a second. Just with a small demonstration. Sorry about the black screen, guys. So, 
Um, it only takes protected cells. Um, it won't really, I don't think it will take button top cells. Um, look at this. All right, let me go ahead and just put it in myself so I don't screw anything up here. Okay, it might take button tops, but look. With the flat top cell, there is a space. There is a space between the positive contact and the positive of the battery. Okay. So it does not... Let's see if I can get a good... That's a good angle right there. So it does not connect. Alright. The bottom is just fine. But the spring, the spring isn't depressed at all. Have literally no connection right there, which is nuts. All right, it's nuts that it has. What's nuts is that it's not. I don't know how to put it. Usually, when flat tops don't work, it's because the positive contact can't be made. But and this is a protected button stop cell, and it's just fine. Different brand than Ace Beam. This is the Claris, and I don't know if it's wise to run a 3600 milliamp hour flashlight in this. I, I think you could do it as long as you avoided the Turbo and the Turbo Max. If you ever went into Turbo, you would not go into Turbo Max uh, with these Claris 3600 milliamp hour batteries, which are very expensive, and I'm not going to buy. I'm not going to buy four of those. Those are those are twenty dollar batteries, and right now the Claris battery is the strongest battery in the world, to my knowledge. For an 18650, 3600 milliamp hours. There's, there's nothing higher than that that's legitimate. There are a couple 3700 floating around that are military grade power cells. That's what they're called. I don't know what you call them. You know. But anyways, also since it's not double springed, I would never bolt this to a gun. Uh, that being said, I would never use this in a tactical situation, anyways, because it's brand new technology. Okay, this is one of this is a trail blazing light, as it said. It's a trail ba blazing soda can light. And there will be other lights like this in the future from other companies that are between twenty thousand and thirty thousand lumens. Okay, and so you gotta understand that because it's so recent, because you got this air vent. I mean, you got lots of heat. You got lots of power running through here. <sighs> the chance of failure isn't zero. Even though it's high quality, like this is as high quality as it gets, that's the point. But just like the iPhone X10 or the iPhone XX Plus, whatever, okay, it's so ahead of the curve. I don't actually think iPhone's ahead of the curve, but the point is, it's like a brand new cell phone. It's so ahead of the curve that it might have bugs that are worked out later. And, and, and you know, they're worked out later. So... <coughs> So keep that keep that in mind. The um, the output isn't uh, the output isn't um, that sustainable. So it, it's a, there's a chance that it will go bad. So I would not use this as police or security um, as my main tactical light. In fact, this guy, the T21VN, makes more sense anyways because. This has a lots of intensity focused into a small spot. Um, and the intensity of this guy, even at maximum, maximum, even at that super max, okay, is very low. It's 34,000 candela. That is the same as the D4, which has an eighth the amount of lumens. Okay. And it is pathetically immeasurable compared to these two guys. Okay, this guy has the, the low mode has seventy thousand so seventy lumens, seventy thousand candela. Okay, so the uh, the intensity is so incredibly low um, that even the you know even these guys on their lowest modes, the intensity is equal to or higher than this guy. Well, this one. TK75's low mode is 35 lumens, <laughs> but if it had a 100 lumen low mode, it would be equally intense to this guy's highest, highest, highest mode. 
So, and, and think of this as really a 4,000 lumen shooter, which only throws out roughly 6,000 candela. And that's, that's a rough estimate. It's actually, no, I guess it's 4,500 candela. So it only, it's only putting out a, you know, this thing on its lowest mode, just 50 lumens, is around 4,000 candela. You know, as you can see, it's quite the so it's it's D dome. It's a this is the TK09 from Ace, from Phoenix, and it's um I don't know if we can see this, but it's a D dome emitter, and um, so it's got some throw to it. And it's 50 lumen low mode. It throws the same as this is going to be able to throw in practical sense, which is 4,000 lumens. And reliably, this is not a good security light. Just throwing that out there. Okay, just throwing that out there. All right, the medium modes are the only sustainable output. So 1,000, 2,000, and 4,000 lumens. The high mode is 8,000 lumens, and it, it crashes after several a uh, four-minute timer. And on top of that, it also has temperature reduction. So if this somehow gets hotter than the normal timer gives you, then it will reduce much sooner. Uh, if you run this out in the cold, out in the freezing cold, or you put an ice cube on it, that doesn't matter. It will still reduce its output after four minutes. You'll have to turn it back up, which you can do by turning it off first. So you turn it off first, and then you turn it back on. And I'm still not sure if it comes on in the mode or not. And the reason I'm not sure is I usually don't let it run for four minutes. Okay, I treat this like a baby. I don't really use this thing to its fullest extent, but I, I should do some more review videos later of this guy. Um, but I just wanted to get away, so get get out there with some of the things that you just can't tell from looking at it. Also, um, the hot symbol is just ever so slightly... I'll mention a couple negatives before I go, just so you don't get too excited. One is the hot symbol is ever so slightly off, which isn't that big of a deal, but I mean, it's not a deal breaker, but for a 300 whatever dollar flashlight that you're going to buy this for, it's a tiny disappointment. Also, these five LEDs are very close to being perfectly kind of, you know, kind of centered around each other. Okay, so that looks like a five-pointed star, but it ain't perfect. Okay, the one at the top that should be lined up with the one in the center is not perfectly lined up. Okay, and it only starts there. Some of these corners just seem like they're a little bit off. So the fit and finish of this flashlight's nice. Um, all of the loom, which they didn't have to do this, but every single one of these guys on the outside is angled slightly. Okay, so we see that they have a little bit of an angle. But again, they're not perfect. For, let's see if we can see this. But for example, um, up here, this one right here, the one on the very top of my screen right now, that guy is angled more to the right than it is to the left compared to the, this one and compared to this one around it. You can tell that kind of. So that's not, that's a very tiny deal. Also, it's got this ugly warning on it. Like, I know that it can damage humans' eyes. They probably are putting these on here to reduce lawsuit issues and issues with flashlights in, in general in the future. The other thing that really, really pissed me off about this is just how ginormous the acebeam.com is. Okay, I know that they have to, they have to have the R R O H S. I forget what that stands for, and all these other guys. That's fine. I get that, and I get the X eighty G T Ace Beam. Why they have to have a huge AceBeam.com just pisses me off. I've seen this on bicycles and other things. It, that I'm gonna probably color this out with paint or something, because that's it's just gross. You know, and people don't need it. I don't need an advertisement. It doesn't need this R. They're just a trademark. You don't see that on Ford. You don't see Ford registered trademark. Like, no, you don't have to register that. So that's kind of gross. You know, I love the design of the Ace Beam logo, but then to screw it up with all that other stuff is crazy. You know, 
the and the other negative to the um, the only other negative to the fit and finish um, is that this guy this the handle and you're not going to be able to really see this but you can see it if I do it this way the handle is not perfect so for a light with such perfect water resistance this handle has a little bit of play and that's with it tightened down with the screwdriver so <sighs> that should be noted as a flashaholic those things concern me um, this guy isn't a problem this guy's very nice very nice instructions uh, the instructions do not tell you that they, they they don't have to tell you but they don't tell you the orientation of this and that it doesn't matter and it doesn't matter and you can tell that it doesn't matter because the tail cast the tail cap has no contact on it whatsoever there's no tail cap contact um, if you look at the yeah gosh this is this after you play around with this for a while this has so much play this has so much play. Anyways, that's a little tiny, tiny little bit of disappointment. So you have both the negative and positive contact. Let's use the D4 here to light this up. You have both negative and positive contact right there. So the spring's positive and the negative's the outside, I believe. I'm not sure. Don't mic my words. I'm not going to be held responsible for people messing up the flashlights. Okay, so either you put it this way or put it this way. They're mirrored contacts. They work the same way on both sides. That's fine. Um, so a notable feature on this is that this, which of course this has play, but this right here has, um, let's get the D4 out again. This has grooves. So you can actually, even with this mounted on there, you can actually still mount this and what's interesting is of course it changes the degree of mounting it from mounting the flashlight like this to be to mounting it um, like this so I don't know if you'll have to use an elbow thing as, as well see I got already I gotta, I'll hand tighten it again And then I'll go ahead and tighten it with a. But I, w I would have rather it. I just had that one more inch of thought that they could have had and put into that handle so that it didn't do that. Okay, it does have a nice symmetrical pattern with the battery level indication. This, and then this guy. So if you look up from here, it's four sides that'll have little indentations. Okay, and that's pretty awesome. Um, so overall, I love the fit and finish of the flashlight. It's, you know, it's pretty well greased. I think that if you're careful and you only charge the batteries when you have to, and you only switch them out after 50% discharge on the batteries, you should only have to re-grease it once or twice a year. So I don't even know the best lubes. There's a lube thread on Candle Power Forums, but I still don't know what the best lube is for this guy. It's gonna be a 30-minute video. That's nuts. I'm just a little excited, guys. I can't stop, can't stop talking about it. Um, so other than those minor details, which obviously they're minor, they're just stupid, simple, minor problems. This is gonna wind up being the whole review. So what else should I say about it in terms of the review itself? Um, the flashlight does not. Uh, the if the run times are just uh, the run time is absurd there's no way you're gonna in normal usage there's no way you're gonna run this down all the way i never have okay i mean the 4000 lumen mode yeah if you turn it on at 4000 or actually if you turn it on the high mode at 8000 lumens okay if you turn it on the high mode and just let it go you'll literally run the battery down at its fastest which is interesting, because the 16,000 lumen and 24, 24, and the 32,000 lumen versions modes heat it up so fast that it decreases the brightness faster than it should, so faster than normal, which is awesome, because 
you can keep doing that. You can keep bursting it if you want to. Um, I recommend putting it down to 1,000 lumens, though, to let it cool. Because 4,000 lumens, it still doesn't cool. So if you try to ramp it up from 4,000 lumens, um, it's still pretty hot. And you're, you're going to be holding the handle at that point because it's still pretty warm. And it won't. It literally, it'll do it for just a brief amount of time. And then it will, it will actually step it immediately back down. It doesn't let you keep it up there for 30 seconds or anything like that. Okay, so keep that in mind, all right, um, which is also an energy thing because the when you're constantly draining the batteries, they, they go down pretty fast. Oh, here's an important detail. It does indeed go in the thing with the handle out, though I don't recommend you do that very often. And if you do, tilt it towards your body so it can't get caught on stuff. Also, it comes in the package with this protecting it on it, which is kind of nice. It gives it that extra edge of protection. Of course, it comes without the handle. Um, without the handle being on it, you know. And um, so yeah, it's got a little bit of protection on it, but it also helps this to come a little bit pre-folded so that you don't have to sit there and you know the velcro extends past where it should I don't like that that's another tiny 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 detail you know because this is as far as it's gonna it's not gonna go much further than that so I don't know why we got velcro down here but whatever um, I have broken my t21's holster um, this one seems like it might be a little bit better but it still looks like it's just double stitched from here in, and that's where the stitching broke. So there's just too much stress on that stitching, and it winds up unthreading and breaking at some point, which is scary. Um, in fact, it's most scary if you loop it through here, if you um, through the main part. If you loop it through the part that Velcros, you'll still have a flashlight because after that breaks and it hangs down, the Velcro's keeping it together. Because this is a closed, because this right here is a closed loop. But if you put it through the main loop, um, the only thing holding it in is that Velcro. So once it goes, it it falls. So for me, it happened slowly enough that it didn't fall on a T. That's what happened on the T21. This big guy, you know. Which, by the way, the head of this is larger than the head of the. You know, you can obviously see it's it's much larger than the head of the XADGT. No. So, we'll do another review later with beam shots, which I'm sorry, it's exhausting to watch this video. You probably didn't, but if you did watch this video, thank you very much. I don't have any prizes for you at the end. I guess I can do a nice satisfying, just a little... Anyways, have a good day.